This ITX build was impossible to complete. Corsair challenged me to build an ITX PC inside the Corsair 2000D case. Let's take you through this disaster of a journey. Today, I want to attempt a full custom hardline loop inside the Corsair 2000D case. If you are sick of this watermark and not being able to utilize all of Windows features, then head on over to whokeys.com. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro key for $16 or a Windows 11 Pro key for $22. Use my code IFR25 for 25% off with loads of payment methods. Copy your code from the user center and paste it here to activate. They also provide you with a step-by-step -step guide and 24 hour support. Now doing a bit of research online, I did find that there was a soft tube water cooled build that was done where the radiator was actually mounted to one of the panels that come out. That had a lot of slack in the tubing as well, so it made it easy. So hardline's gonna be a bit more difficult. Not only that, but Corsair states that you can fit full-size graphics cards in this system. That's simply gonna pull air from the back and then down the bottom here is where the cable's gonna come out, such as your display or HDMI. Now there is a 360 millimeter radiator bracket at the back. So hopefully we can fit a 360 millimeter radiator in. Not too sure space-wise if that's gonna be achievable or not. And then we've got three intake fans at the rear here and they are super thin. Now our ITX motherboard will slot in down the bottom here. So I think we're gonna have plenty of clearance to fit a radiator on the inside here. It's just whether or not we can get our hands in and get all the tubing done. I've still obviously got to figure out a way to mount our pump res combo in this build, but I'm thinking that small XD3 that we have should fit in nicely. Then of course, we're gonna be putting in an SFX power supply. Hopefully it keeps it nice and compact and we'll see what we can do here. Better start building. So this is pretty much the only ITX motherboard that we own in the Z790 variant. This is the ROG Strix Z790i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. As the name suggests, built-in Wi-Fi. We've also got plenty of USB-C, plenty of USB, 2.5 gig LAN. We also have two NVMe slots, so we could add plenty of storage to this motherboard. And this is LGA 1700 socket. So let's get our CPU installed. So on our shelves, we have an i5 13600K CPU, overclockable, there is no real reason and why we chose this apart from we don't have any other CPUs on hand. And I think it'll make a nice little CPU for an ITX system. Oh, this is awesome. It's kind of like a two-tier design. So you can actually put an NVMe drive on the bottom, then there's a heat sink in between, and then on top, you can put another NVMe drive. Now for today's system, we're only gonna be installing the one drive. So we only need to remove one layer. This is a one terabyte MP600 core and you can see it's already got its own stock heat sink on it. We're not gonna be needing that today because the motherboard has its own built in. I feel like Corsair could maybe save on a bit of money by selling these without the heat sink because most motherboards seem to have its own and Gen 4 and Gen 3 drives, they do benefit from a little bit of heat. Obviously not too much, but Gen 5 drives, you know they're gonna need heat sinks. Now it does look like I'm missing the thermal pad from the top of this heat sink. So I've gone ahead and applied one on top of here and we'll go ahead and slot that in because it goes in upside down and from what i can tell it doesn't look like there's a screw that holds this down at all it looks like it is just kept in place by the heat sink cover now keeping with the whole Corsair theme, I'm gonna go ahead and install the black Corsair XC7 RGB Pro CPU block. Now, I did touch on this in the last video, but one thing that I feel like is wrong with this thermal paste application is, I feel like it should be rotated 90 degrees so that the thermal paste is running lengthways, which matches the way that the CPU is facing. Let me give you guys an example. Most people would install the CPU with the logo facing up the right way. So if I go ahead and install the CPU block, like this. Now you can see that the thermal paste didn't cover the top bit of the CPU. There's a good five to seven mil which is left uncovered. Now if this thermal paste was rotated 90 degrees, it would be full coverage of the CPU. Anyway, we'll clean the thermal paste off of the CPU and the block and we'll reapply our own. Nice line of thermal grizzly. Oh, this one's ran out. Found some more. Now, I definitely want to get the block in before installing the RAM to give myself a little bit more space to get my fingers in to be able to turn these thumb screws. If I had the RAM in there, I think it'd be a little more difficult. So anything to make it easier on ourselves. So with the Domino Platinum RAM being so tall, I'm worried about clearance issues. We actually had this with the last build where we couldn't install them because the radio was getting in the way. And this is an ITX build and we're trying to fit a custom loop inside. And so it's things like RAM clearance that become issues in these types of builds. Hopefully we're all clear because I love this RAM and I want to use it. Okay, so the motherboard must go in like 
this. Ah, so you don't even need a riser cable for this. Motherboard goes in, GPU connects straight in, and the IO is at the bottom with the hole at the rear for cables to route out. That's actually pretty genius. This is looking like it's gonna be a lot harder than I first thought it would be. I'm gonna install the power supply here, breathing air in from the back panel because the back panel is completely open. Every time I install a new component, I'm finding it more and more difficult to figure out how I'm going to install a pump res combo because there is not a lot of room in here. I did have the idea of installing it on one of the pre-existing fans on the inside, but then I installed the motherboard and the motherboard's actually overlapping those pre-existing fans, so I can't, I can't install it. So we're gonna have to come up with a new idea. Now I wanted to install the power supply now because the system is starting to really fill up and I feel like connecting a few cables before I install other components is gonna be a lot easier to do earlier on rather than waiting until the end. A lot of the components are gonna block things like the CPU power on the motherboard or the 24 pin. So if I can get those installed now, it'll make my life so much easier. I'm gonna try my hardest to make sure I can get it water cooled. So we'll see how we go. So this is actually cleaned up really nice. We got a lot of the cables plugged in. Ignore the mess up the front. Once I install all the other fans, we'll get that all nice and cleaned up. So I want to leave that loose for now. But as you can see, we've got all of our IO connectors. We've got the 24 pin and we've also got CPU power all plugged in. We still have to manage the back of the system. But before I do all that, I want to get the GPU installed and see how much room we have to play with to install a reservoir. So let's check that out. So they did say that this could fit a full size three slot GPU. So I mean, this is actually kind of a little bit bigger than three slots, so I, I don't have a lot of faith here, but the length of it fits. Oh no, please. Okay, yeah. So this GPU, this chonker right here is way too big. However, on the website, it does say they could fit 365 millimeter GPU and this is 345. So it does fit lengthways, but this thing, it's too much of a chonker, so we're gonna have to swap it out. All right, we've got our new card here, the ROG Strix RTX 3080. It's definitely a lot smaller than the last graphics card, the Asus TUF 4080. It looks like it fits in perfectly. It's actually gonna be drawing in cool air from the front venting holes here as well, so that's not looking too bad. Now we're gonna have to figure out where to mount the reservoir. So at the moment, I'm trying to experiment with a few different ways into which I can make all of this fit. This is actually getting a lot tougher than I at first thought it would be because I have no room to get my hands in. So I don't know how I'm gonna do the last tubing up connected to the radiator. What I'm hoping is that I could actually put the radiator in place and then plug in the GPU last. I'm not sure if there's gonna be enough room there though. So I have to put the radiator together first so we can test that out to see if there's enough room. guys so i've spent a few days on this build just trying to think of ways that i can make this work i really want the custom water cooling with the hard tubing in there using all corsair components it's seeming like it's gonna almost be impossible to achieve. And I really don't like saying that because I've always found a way to make stuff work in builds before, but I physically have no access into this case. I cannot fit my hand in. The only way I could do something is by removing a fan or two from the back here so I have access in there, but I don't wanna do a janky job. I wanna do it properly and I wanted to see what this case is truly capable of and it's seeming like I don't have enough. I just can't get my hands in there to do all the tubes and everything. There's about three centimeters gap between the radiator and the power supply, but then the reservoir is sticking out from there as well, and it's pretty much right up against the radiator. So there's no way to get fittings in front of the reservoir to connect to everything else. So I feel like soft tubing could definitely work in this. I could make soft tubing work because it doesn't matter if I have slack on the soft tubing. I could connect it right now. I know it's secure and, and that, and then I could just screw that in like so. You can't do that with hard tubing. And because I have no access to the inside, it's pretty much impossible. Not only that, but I can't even remove the GPU and then install it through this gap. This gap is not big enough to fit the GPU in. So I am really out of options here. And I really don't like to say this, but I'm probably gonna have to use an all-in-one cooler to complete this build, which means I need to strip out all the water cooling gear. Okay guys, I slept on the issue. 
it's the next day and I figured I still want a custom loop in there. So we tried to go the soft tube route. Now we're facing our next issue and oh, this pains me so much because I, I know I can make this work, but the challenge is no customization to the case or Corsair water cooling. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use fittings at the front of this pump res combo. I have to put them at the side, but now they're going too wide and I can't get this in properly. I can't mount this anywhere else in the case. I have seen soft tubing done before, but they used a smaller graphics card and they mounted the pump res combo on the side of the power supply uh, shroud, I guess you want to call it. And so it made it work. Now I could also mount a smaller pump res combo down here, but then that would be defeating the purpose of using all Corsair components. So now we truly are left with no option but to go with the all-in-one cooler, which is annoying because I know I can make it work. I know it. But for this one, guys, unfortunately, you know, sometimes in life, things don't go your way, but we're lucky we do have a second option to go with. Well, the 360mm cooler is installed. We've cable tied all of the cables. So all that is left to do is to screw this in. Then we'll see if it turns on. All right, for our first test running around PUBG 4K Ultra settings, we are at around 65 degrees Celsius on the GPU with 99% load on the GPU as well. I think that's absolutely incredible. And we are achieving around 180 FPS. I've also got the CPU temperatures on there and we've peaked at around 45 degrees Celsius, currently at 43 degrees Celsius right now. The main thing I wanna see from this system is how hot it gets. And 65 degrees Celsius on the GPU is as hot as I've seen so far. And we've been running this for around 30 minutes. You know, for such a small compact case, it is packed full of features and I think it's really unique and I really enjoyed building in this. It's unfortunate that I was able to fit the All Corsair custom loop inside, but maybe with a bit of modification, we could do another video and show you guys how we can fit a full hardline loop inside this case. Let us know in the comments if you wanna see that. Now guys, I scoured Facebook Marketplace and picked up some awesome budget PCs and gave them a deep clean and I'm giving it away to one of you. So if you wanna see that video, feel free to click here right now.